Hickok 45 here. You're looking at a beautiful Smith & Wesson, are you not? I think so. This is the Model 22. It's from the Smith & Wesson Classic Series that they have reintroduced in recent years. This gun is based on the model uh, 1950. Smith & Wesson, I believe it was model 1950, before they uh, gave them uh, the designated uh, model numbers like 21, 22, 29, etc., etc., and it is a 45 ACP caliber, and that makes it a little different for a revolver. Let's turn it over and let you look at the other side. You notice you got a five screw model there. She's clear, of course. Beautiful gun. I mean, that uh, color case hardening is by Turnbull, I believe, and he, his company, is is uh, known for being the best in the West. At, at that now it does have that ugly key lock you know that's the <laughs> that's the one big negative uh, even though smith has reintroduced these old guns these classic models they still have that uh, that key lock on there which detracts of course from the the beauty of it but uh you know if it has to be it has to be at least we get these beautiful guns back so to speak some of these guns like this one i think if you found one of these uh, an actual uh, model 1950 in, in this kind of condition or in just really nice condition it, it might be two thousand dollars or more they're they're just very expensive so it is nice of course these aren't cheap either this thing is i don't know eight hundred nine hundred dollars right here uh this is by the way uh compliments of uh, asp uh, academy self-protection there in jolton uh one of the guys let me just take that uh, the other day and to do a video with i said sure uh neat gun and i don't have anything now that that fires a 45 acp in a revolver i've talked about it let me show you how it works then i'll uh explain it to you look at that how's that for a speed loader it all goes in so if you haven't seen one of those or how that works let me just demonstrate you pop it in close it up and you shoot I don't know where this gun hits uh, or hold, where to hold, but we'll find out. So then you pop out the, the clip, and there you go. It's a full moon clip. Let me show you how that works. Now, this, uh, this concept came along back in the uh, early part of the, the 20th century. Back during uh, World War I, Colt and Smith & Wesson offered these. I think they're both model 1917s, I think, is when they offered those. But... They had them in uh, long Colt, 45 Colt, which is this long cartridge, of course. But, uh, you know, and, and it, it barely, barely fit in the cylinder. So you can't shoot a long Colt, 45 Colt. I said that out to point that out. But, you know, we had all these wonderful 1911s floating around, correct? All this ammunition, because this is just 45 ACP. After all, it's that wonderful cartridge that most of us really enjoy shooting. So you had plenty of that around. And uh, during World War II and afterwards, we just needed more guns. And so uh, Colt and Smith & Wesson chambered their, uh, their new service guns and then Smith, their, their models, in, in that cartridge. So it could take advantage of this cartridge. There are so many of them available. Except, you know, they will chamber and they will shoot, I think, most of the time because they, uh, they head space on the end of the case. So that gun would fire okay just sticking those in there. However... As you can see, ejecting the case is uh, not going to work too well, is it? So you have to punch them out with something. And, you know, that's easy right there because it still has a lead in it and it's not expanded. So uh, a little bit problematic there. Uh, but uh, with this, you know, there's a little extra room between the cylinder and the, and the frame that would accommodate that. And you just pop them all out together, see? So that's like the ultimate speed loader. In fact, it's a very nice speed loader works pretty darn well let me show you here let me put my ear plugs in real quick and just take up more shots so i got my gun it's not loaded if i'm normally going to load a revolver i need to grab the rounds well pop that in there and fumble it around and oh come on don't fumble it and there you go <laughs> seems to shoot a little high Based on my hold, a little flinch there, huh? Uh, 
Okay, so so anyway, then of course it, it empties very quickly with that out and put another one in. So it's just a matter of where you carry those. Pretty uh, interesting system. If you have not seen this, that might be uh, like real news to you. You might not have known that there was a revolver that would take these automatic cartridges. This is the ACP cartridge, automatic cold pistol. You know, it's designed for an automatic. But with these clips, see how it works. I have an empty one here. Actually, let's show you how you empty them. This is, there's various tools for doing this, and this one works pretty well. I uh, just noticed. I had, back when I used these things, I had a different tool. They've come a long way. So you just prize them off, and uh, you know you empty them out. Now, if I load another one, I just always get the flat surface uh, pointing forward. It seemed, seemed to always work best for me when I was using one of these. I used to compete with one of these in Ipsic uh, revolver class. I had a six, model 625 Smith and Wesson. And this, these were my speed loaders. And you just pop these in there. Some of them are tighter than others, and some go in pretty easily. Ah, sometimes you have to tap them a little bit, and I'm not going to do that here. That one's really tight. That's just one I picked up randomly that I had back from the old days. But most of these I loaded, uh, loaded up a little bit easier than that. So you load them up, and there you go. There's your speed loader. Now, one thing I did learn back in the day was. Uh, before I went to a match, and I read a review on this gun, somebody uh, long ago, they had talked about having trouble with these things hanging up and having to help turn the cylinder with their hand and all the tight tolerances of the Smith and everything. What it is, I learned this when I was competing, that these things aren't perfectly flat. They're made of spring steel, I believe, but think about it, they have to be perfectly flat because when I put that in there, you know, you don't have a lot of space between there. So if that thing is warped, bent a little bit, you know, it's going to hang up somewhere. Now what I always did when I was competing, I put them in the gun in a safe place on the range, cocked the hammer a little bit, and I would spin it. Let's see here. Get it. Yeah. I would make sure that worked. Okay. Turn freely all the way around. Then I would take it out, put it in my box, put the next one in. I made sure every one of these uh, loaded was going to turn freely because I tell you what it's not wise to be in the match you know you're shooting an array of targets you load another one in there you get it in there you want to bam, 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 and it hangs up on you so uh, no time to discover that so they have to be flat and you need to take care of them if you do this but anyway it's an interesting uh, concept isn't it I don't have any of the half moon clips those are what came with the uh, the 1917 guns that were used in World War One and, and thereafter and it's just what you would think, it's a half moon, this is a full moon. You'd, it would take two, you'd have uh, basically just salt in half. You'd have three in one and three in the other side, and you just grab a couple and put them in there to load it you know, more quickly than individual cartridges. So that's what they had back in the day. And then someone came along with the full moon clips, and as long as you, you keep them uh, from getting warped, that's okay. And you can see how they might get a little bent. Uh, you have pressure on them with loaded rounds, you know, if you're in your pocket and playing with them or whatever. And you drop an empty on the ground, you step on it, uh, you know, it could bend it just a little bit. So, and I was never successful at straightening them back up. If one was bent, toss it and buy more. So, that's a pretty interesting concept if you uh, were not aware of that. Now, also, as I said, you could fire these in there in a pinch. You just would have trouble ejecting the empty cases. Uh, also, uh, after World War One, I, I think it was Remington came out with uh, the. Uh, 45 auto ram it's called and I have some of those somewhere because I shot them in my gun I, don't, I know I didn't give those to the guy I sold that gun to I, I'm pretty sure I kept them I just can't find them but I had about a hundred uh, uh, cases uh, cartridges I'd loaded that were 45 auto rim and they have a normal rim you know like I said 45 Colt actually a little bit bigger probably but they had, they're a regular cartridge for a revolver and it's the same length same everything and you just put them in there and they will eject, you know, the ejector will, will catch them. So if you want to, you could load some of those up if you had a revolver like that, which is what I did after I quit competing with it. I thought, well, I'll just turn it into a regular revolver, had some of those auto rim cases, and it was just like coming out shooting a 44 Special. Basically the same thing, same ballistically almost. And uh, I let somebody talk me out of it though. So you know how that goes. All right, so interesting little concept. Let's shoot a little bit more. I've got a couple of these in my pocket. Now, the owner of the gun has, uh, has some, they're Hogue or Smith & Wesson grips, they're big rubber grips, they really feel a whole lot better than these do. 
but I just, you know, those are beautiful. I put the originals on there. It's just, uh, again, classic. It's in the classic series. And even if it doesn't shoot as well or harder to shoot, eh, so be it. I'm not going to try to put on a marksmanship demonstration here. I just want to shoot a little bit and show you that this gun exists. And uh, it's a really nice old uh, piece, actually. A new old piece. Now, I didn't put on my case. I had a little uh, little uh, case I'd wear right here when I was competing. And you put your rounds kind of like that. And you just load her up. And it's pretty handy. Let's see. <laughs> if you don't drop You drop those. And of course I dropped this one, if it had still been on my belt, it would have been like this. Okay, I pop that one out, bring it down here, drop that one in. And you see how, uh, how fairly smooth that is, you know, pop that one out, grab that one, the next one, lay it in there and you're back in action. It's not quite as fast maybe as a, uh, an auto loader, but really not all that bad. Not all that bad. It's just that you have these big round things that need to be kind of sticking out or in a pouch. And there are all kinds of different mechanisms. If you get the Dillon catalog, which many of you probably do, because they'll have some uh, nice scenery on the cover. Uh, they have a variety of different revolver accoutrements, things like this, and pouches. And I've seen people, these things line all the way around, you know, because it takes a lot of them. If you're shooting in a match where you have to shoot maybe 30, 40 rounds in a uh, given stage, it's going to take a lot of revolver, uh, 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 well, it's going to take a lot of rounds, whatever you're shooting, and you have just six there every time you load, so you, know, you just need a lot of them on your person. So it may not be all that practical, <laughs> but, uh, you know, useful and fun. If you were just, uh, say, a police officer, you wouldn't necessarily have 49 of those things on you somewhere. You know, not many folks are in a shootout where they need 39 of these things on them. But in a match, you know, you might. It's fun. Okay, so that's how they work. I don't know if you're aware of that and how those, those things do work. I've, these are from the old days. This is almost uh, going back 20 years. I had some of the rounds I used to fire still loaded in those, those clips. That literally goes back to about 90, 1990. Uh, I have not fired it. I sold the gun. That's some I just loaded today. These are some old Glazer safety slugs I kept in there. Those are really light and very, very fast. I've got some snake shot in one in the barn I've had hanging on the wall in there for about 20 years. You know, the same thing because uh, pretty handy, pretty handy. Let's take a couple more shots. I just had a couple more. Yeah, I loaded up. Let me, if I could get these on my person here somewhere. Can't do a an IPSC demonstration necessarily, but I'll show you how much fun it can be. It's kind of like the, in a way, the pump shotgun. You know, we we tend to think sometimes again that automatic shotgun is the way to go. It'll shoot faster, and the same with automatics versus revolvers. And and there's an argument for both, but uh, a revolver doesn't have to be slow necessarily. Can't do a Jerry Mukulake if you know him, <laughs> but uh, for a mere mortal, you know you can actually reload a revolver with a little bit of speed. Let's uh, before I run out of ammo, let's take a couple of rounds across the hill. I don't. This thing seems to shoot a little bit high. I should be able to hit the gong if I hold on the bottom of it. Oh, we got a couple of soldiers here. We need to take out. sure not to step on those or I'll end up with uh, what I was talking about. Let's do a little gong hunting. All right. Now this seems to print 
kind of high, so I'm going to hold around the bottom of it. See what happens. trigger. A little too low, I think. trouble seeing the sight. Alright. Okay. Let's see if I have any more ammo here. Ah, oh, I found one. I found one. <laughs> okay. Let's shoot six more. All right, it uh, shoots kind of high, so I'm aware of that now. Plus, I want to flinch with this gun worse than anything I've shot recently. I'm not sure why. All right, I need to settle down and uh, make a better showing on that gong over there. Get a better sight picture. I'll take it. It's a light trigger. I don't know, it's a little trouble. A little trouble seeing the uh, front sight, plus uh, even knowing where to hold. Okay, I can't quit on a miss. That went over it, I'm sure, okay. Well, I'm not seeing any dust stirred up, so I'll still assume I'm going high. Uh, yeah, definitely. I'll stay. Oh yes, I was, when I finally started hitting it again, I was holding about that far below the gong. Uh, so yes, I was uh, definitely going high. The, uh, the problems I'm having with that particular sight, well, you'd hate to paint that sight. You know, such a beautiful gun, you know, smear sight paint or fingernail polish on it like we have been known to do in years past. But when you lined it up, uh, it's it's not that hard to see the front sight, but but seeing the top of it uh, for some reason is problematic So I was seeing the sight as far as windage, but more of it was uh, Sticking up and I, I realized I think so anyway, that's the best excuse I can think of right now actually it is a fairly accurate excuse, but uh, I think uh, shooting it a while it uh, would not be a problem and getting a better front sight picture but those are those are neat. Uh, this whole system here, uh, some of you this is probably new to, and, and others it's not. You may even compete with one of these things. You know what I'm talking about. This is not necessarily a competition gun. The uh, the one that I used to shoot was uh, it was a Smith, but it was a 625 stainless. Had a five inch barrel. Had a full under lug like this, so it had a little more weight to the barrel, and it was stainless, and it was meant to just be shot and shot and shot and shot. It wasn't uh, you know a beautiful gun like this. 
and I had uh, some kind of custom rubber grips on. I don't recall what they were, but it felt good and, and shot well. It just just as this one would, just have to work with a little bit. Uh, but this gun is uh, it's almost just a collectible. I don't know if you'd want to shoot it and just wear it out. Such a beautiful uh, color case hardening job on that thing, and the bluing, uh, the shine, the finish on it is just gorgeous. Just gorgeous. Yeah, 45 caliber model, 1950. That's basically what it is. And it's a shame that there are so few of these out there, of the originals. But this is a very comfortable cartridge to shoot, you know, the 45 ACP, in uh, either a uh, automatic pistol or in a revolver. It's very comfy because these are heavy, big old in frames or heavy guns, as you know. So that's how they work. You pop those off. You put more more rounds on. There are various tools like this to use. Uh, the one I had was different from that. I've seen three or four different gizmos people have come up with, and uh, and the key is in uh, getting these things that are they're straight and at work. And if one is bent, I say throw it away unless you know somebody to straighten them out. Somebody might. But full moon clips or half moon clips, they work. They'll even work without the clips. Uh, just not very practical. And you can use the 45 auto rim in it. And it's a very comfy, about like having a 44 Special. Nice little revolver, fun to shoot. And is that a beauty or what? So I thank uh, the fellows at, uh, at ASP and Jolton for allowing me to uh, put this baby in a video, feature it. It's gorgeous, gorgeous. So, hope you enjoyed that. Life's good.